أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله والحمد حقه كما يستحقه حمدا كثيرا وأعوذ به من شر نفسي إن النفس لأمارة بالسوء إلا ما رحم ربي والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من أول يوم ظلمهم إلى قيام يوم الدين السلام عليك سيدي ومولاي يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم for the purification of the souls the enlightenment of the hearts the acceptance of the deeds and for the hastening of the reappearance of بقية الله الأعظم روحي وأرواح العالمين له الفداء in Latin your souls purify the atmosphere with the recitation of salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad اللهم صل على محمد wa Ali Muhammad respected scholars sisters Elders and brothers, Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is an important discussion in the area surrounding the 10th of Muharram. It's an aspect that affects the life of each and every human being. And the analysis of this highlights the motives and key important results from the epic of Karbala and the day of Ashura. The dreams of Abu al-Ahrar, Sayyid al-Shuhada, the third holy Imam, Aba Abdullah al-Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Is an important dimension of the study of Karbala and the 10th of Muharram. You will not find much discussions about the dreams of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Because when you look at Ashura, you'll recognize that there are a number of things that are particular about this event. It's truly unique in so many different ways. But the dreams of Imam al Hussein salam are seldom looked at, yet they're referred to sometimes by certain scholars or speakers or poets, especially on a night like this. They refer to the dream of Imam al Hussein salam, for example, in Medina, when he was about to leave the city, and he saw his grandfather, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, in his dream. Of course, Karbala stands as a unique event in history because it has survived the course of time in the idea that today we have literature regarding what happened on Ashura that you and I need to study in order to have a better understanding of the revolution of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Meaning what? The sermons of the Imam, the du'as of the Imam, the poems of the Imam, the dialogues of the Imam, the conversation with his enemies, the conversations with his families. These are all important documents 
and statements by Sayyid al-Shuhada in order to clarify what was Ashura all about? Why did he rise? What is so important about it? Why do we commemorate it every single year? The dreams of Imam al Hussein salam are also included in this because Imam al Hussein salam had a number of dreams and it is also a subject that affects us, you and I. Why? Because you and I dream, don't we? You and I experience dreams in our lives. According to the National Sleep Foundation in Washington, D.C., each and every individual, every human being, dreams approximately two hours a night, every single night. And what happens is, this results in about three to six dreams. And in this, we find that it takes about five to 20 minutes, this course of dreams. But the problem is, we forget 95% of the dream. Often only 5% is indeed recalled. The idea that emerges, however, is many ulama, scholars and others, get questions from people as to what their dreams mean. How many of us have received emails or questions from people? Molana, I saw this nightmare or I saw this dream or I, for example, saw myself next to an imam or I myself saw myself eating something. I remember one of the people emailed me and said, Molana, I saw a dream. Please give me the interpretation. The dream is I saw myself talking to Donald Trump. I said to him, brother, go and do istighfar and do ghusl. <laughs> In the idea that many people see different kinds of dreams and they are desperate for interpretation. I received an email from somebody who said a relative of mine saw a dream that me and my wife are divorced. We are happily married. We are now scared. Molana, tell me, are we going to be divorced? I said to him, what is going on? Don't let this dream affect your marital relationship. And the idea that because somebody saw it, they want an interpretation. I tell you today, you look, there are those who have seen dreams and unfortunately have used it to manipulate and control people. There are those who have claimed prophethood because of dreams. There was a man in 2021, last year, what happened in Egypt, he saw a dream that he is a prophet. And in the same dream, he saw that his father is kafir. So when he woke up, he went in Egypt and killed his father. Later, he was arrested and he was what? He was also sentenced to death in Egypt for murder of his father. There are those who have tried to what? To utilize dreams in order to rule people, in order to control people, in order to send wrong messages. Therefore, the subject is very, very important. The subject needs to be discussed in terms of how it affects our lives and as well as that, the dreams of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Peace and blessings be upon him. I would like to examine the subject of the dreams of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam in order for you and I to benefit through looking at the number of questions. Number one, how does the Quran examine the area of dreams? Number two, how does the religion of Islam look at dreams? What is the understanding of the different types of dreams you and I can see? Number three, did the Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt see dreams? And what kind of dreams did they see? Number four, of great importance, how do I know if my dream is true or I should throw it in the bin? Or here in the States, garbage, yes? Number five, of importance, what happens if I see one of the members of Ahl al-Bayt in my dream? Is this a true dream? Can I act upon it or not? Number six, what were the dreams of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? What were the main dreams that he saw? How many did he see in his life? And what are the theological, spiritual lessons from these dreams? So that you and I are able to look at this subject as comprehensively as possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Sleep is minor death. Allahu yatawaffal anfus hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha. Allah wa ta'ala says, when you sleep, you die. What happens? The soul is separated from the body. In a narration from the life of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We are told 
that he says the understanding of this verse is what? Is that when an individual sleeps, their soul is raised, is separated from their body. Now it either goes to the angelic realms or it goes to a place between this earth and the heavens. And the shaitan then places images on it. Imam Ali Salam says, depending where the soul goes in sleep, the dreams are then what? Interpreted in such a manner. But the Quran, interestingly, mentions the dreams of a number of people. But never does the Quran mention a dream which is not true. Do you know why? Today, you speak to someone about dreams and they say, forget all dreams. Every dream that you see is not true, they'll tell you. How? The Quran does not mention any dream except that it's true. Except that it has a reality to it. Which means what? Which means dreams can't be ignored. Yes, there is a number of dreams that have to be dismissed without shadow of a doubt. And we'll discuss those. But interestingly, the Quran looks at the dreams of prophets, for example. Prophet Ibrahim, he comes and says to his son Ismail, Ya Bunayya, inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk. Fandur madha tara. He saw in his dream that he's slaughtering his son Ismail. This was a true dream, isn't it? Because every prophet, whatever they see, is what is true as far as the dream is concerned. Which other prophet in the Quran is known to be a prophet who is an expert in dream interpretation? Yusuf. Salam Allah alayhi. Yusuf sees a dream. Ya Bunay, Ya Abati inni. Quran says, he says to his father, Ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaban wa shamsa wal qamar ra'aytuhum li sajideen. He saw 11 stars or comets and he saw the sun and the moon doing sajda to him. And of course his father says to him, Ya Bunayya la taqsus ru'yaak. Don't tell your brothers this dream of yours. Yusuf alayhi salam saw a dream. Later it materialized when he became the king of Egypt. And then they came and did sajda before him. Yes? Who else? We find our holy prophet, Rasul al-A'zam wa Nabi al-Akram, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Quran tells us that there are two dreams that he saw. One of them is in Surah Al-Isra, verse number 60. وَمَا جَعَنَّ الرُّؤْيَ الَّتِي أَرَيْنَاكَ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَالشَّجَرَ الْمَلْعُونَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ The Prophet of Islam saw a dream. What was his dream? He saw monkeys climbing on his pulpit and pulling the mimbar, which distressed him. Quran comes forward and says, this will happen. شَجَرَةُ الْمَلْعُونَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ is the cursed tree. The cursed tree in Quran, according to many riwayat, Sunni and Shia are Bani Umayyah. Yes? So, the Prophet sees this dream. In another part of the Quran, in Surah Al-Vatih, verse number 27, Allah says, لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your dream become a reality. What was this? The Prophet of Islam saw the Muslims entering and what? And coming to Mecca peacefully and conquering Mecca in such a manner. And this actually materialized in the year 8 after Hijrah, Fath of Mecca happened. Now, the question is, does the Quran only talk about good people seeing dreams or non-prophets as well? Of course, it talks about those two individuals with Yusuf alayhi salam who had a dream in the prison. Do you remember? Those two individuals, those who've watched the Yusuf series on TV, subhanAllah, sometimes we need TV to make us understand some of the lives of the prophets or some important individuals before the Mukhtar series that was published in Iran or made in Iran. Nobody's heard of Mukhtar, al thaqafi right? But sometimes media pu publications or productions are very important to highlight this. Yusuf alayhi salam, he had these two companions in the prison. They came to him and they said, look, we see you as a righteous person. One of them would see a dream that he was what? He was f serving wine. The other was what? The birds were eating bread from his head. Yes, he was lifting it and what? The birds were eating. They would say to Yusuf, tell us, what does it mean? Yes, Yusuf alayhi salam interprets the dreams. He had this ability to interpret the dreams, isn't it? And he told them both 
what their dreams were all about. Similarly, the king of Egypt sees a dream. This dream no one is able to interpret. And therefore, they find Yusuf salam in the prison. He interprets it. And interpretation, of course, turns out to be correct. The important lesson here, without going into the details of this dream, is what? Is that dreams do serve a purpose. And the Quran has discussed the dreams of prophets and non-prophets. And has highlighted that sometimes dreams do tell you about what will happen in the future. You agree? Because here, non-prophets saw dreams about what will happen in the future. The king of Egypt, was he a prophet? Those two companions of Yusuf in the dungeons or in the prisons, were they a prophet? No. Yet they saw dreams, which means dreams do have a reality. Dreams can mean something. But it's of the utmost importance to understand what could and what can't they mean. Question, do the Ahl al-Bayt see dreams? Yes. Do the dreams of the Holy Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt, are they considered the dreams that are truthful? Yes. For example, listen to this beautiful narration from the Holy Prophet, Rasul al-A'zam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Narrated by Shaykh al-Saduq, this narration is truly wonderful. He says, Inni ra'aytu al-bariha ajaib. One day the Prophet of Islam wakes up and says to the Muslims, Yesterday I saw in my dream wonders. Ra'aytu rajulan min ummati wa qad atahu malik al-mawt liyakbidha ruha. I saw a person from my community, from my ummah, and malik al-mawt has come to take his soul. فَجَاءَهُ بِرَّهُ بِوَالِدَيْهِ فَمَنَعَهُ مِنْ But all of a sudden, his kindness to his parents came in the form of a creation of God and stopped the angel of death from taking the soul of that person. Subhanallah. That is the beauty of respect and kindness to parents, isn't it? The Prophet goes on and says, وَرَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا مِنْ أُمَّتِي قَدْ بَسَطَ عَلَيْهِ عَذَابَ الْقَبْرِ I saw a person, from my ummah, who is about to be punished in the grave. All of a sudden, the wudu came and stopped the punishment of the grave. This wudu is taken lightly by you and I. Some of us hold the world record for the quickest wudu. Have you seen that? Literally, within a few seconds, the wudu is over. Sometimes, some of us are not bothered to be in wudu at all times. One of the recommendations of Majalis al Hussein salam, such as these, is to come in the state of wudu. It is highly recommended to go to sleep in the state of wudu. It is encouraged to be in wudu at all times. If you die and you're in the state of wudu, we are told you die a shaheed, a martyr. It doesn't cost you much. The Prophet of Islam says it stops the punishment of the grave. Then he says, وَرَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا مِنْ أُمَّتِي قَدْ اِحْتَوَشَتْهُ مَلَائِكَةُ الْعَذَابِ I saw that the angels were responsible for punishment were surrounding him. فَجَاءَتْهُ صَلَاتُهُ فَمَنَعَتْهُ مِنْهُمْ And his salah came and stopped the punishment of these particular angels. Similarly, in the book at tawheed of Shaykh al-Saduq, from Imam al-Baqir, from Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. This is a wonderful hadith that highlights how the Ahl al-Bayt, alayhi wa salam, have Ismullah al-A'zam. Because many people ask, what is the great name of God? Ismullah al-A'zam. Listen to this riwayah. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, رَأَيْتُ الْخِذْرَ فِي الْمَنَامِ I saw khidr in my dream. قَبْلَ بَدْرٍ بِلَيْلَةِ On the eve of the battle of Badr. فَقُلْتُ لَهْ عَلِّمْنِي شَيْئًا أُنصَرُ بِهِ عَلَى الْأَعْدَاءِ I want you to teach me something that tomorrow in Badr I can fight the enemies. فَقَالْ خِضَرْ says to Amir al-Mu'mineen in his dream. قُلْ say يَا هُوَ يَا مَنْ هُوَ إِلَّا هُوَ what is that? Ya huwa, ya man huwa illa hu. Say this. Falamma asbahtu. When he woke up, he said to the Holy Prophet of Islam, This is what I saw in my dream. Faqala ya Ali. Listen to the Prophet. He says, Ya Ali, 
You have been taught the great name of Allah. On the day of Badr, I used to recite it often. Yes. Question, is this Ismullah Al-A'zam? The Prophet of Islam says to Ali, you have been taught the Ismul A'zam, the great name of God, in which if you mention it, your dua is answered. Immediately. Ya huwa, ya man huwa illahu. The problem most of us is, we deal with these things figuratively or physically. Meaning what? We want a prescription that we just say it and everything falls into place, like a jinn. You know, or genie, genie, yes, rub a lamp, and I want this, this, this. No. This is in accordance with the understanding of the individual and his levels of ma'rifah and proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I may recite, Ya hu, ya man hu, uh, huwa illa hu, yes, millions of times, but it may not do anything. However, when Amir al muminin recites it once, it's different, isn't it? Yes. This is one of the dreams that what? That the Ahl al-Bayt would say and indeed would tell people. That's why the Prophet of Islam sometimes would wake up in the morning and would, ga would gauge and look at the Muslims and say, Hal min mubashirat? Does anyone have a good dream? It was encouraged to what? to tell people of certain good dreams. The Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt, their dreams, without a shadow of a doubt, was something that is truthful, something that brought about goodness, something that people were pleased to hear. Question, how does Islam see dreams? Why? Because some of us see dreams at night, isn't it? Wake up in the morning distressed, seen a nightmare, for example, seen something that's horrific. You wonder, is this true or not true? How do I know? People desperately seeking some meaning, some understanding, some interpretation. Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. In Al Kafi Sharif, has this. He says dreams are classified into three different types. Please pay attention to this because many people, no doubt, will find this useful in their lives. He comes forward and says, The dream is divided into three parts. It is a means of glad tidings from Allah to a believer. What does this mean? Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream tells you about something that will be useful for you. Warns you about something that may be detrimental for you alerts you to something in your life that will help you highlight something that will inspire you these dreams are possible there was a man by the name of al hassan ibn abdullah he lived at the time of imam al-kadhim alayhi salam the seventh holy imam he used to see a lot of dreams he was known as a man who is often dreaming so every day he would wake up and say i saw a dream last night i saw a dream last night i saw a dream last night right he was somebody who was distant from the Ahl al-Bayt He was not someone who's close to the Ahl al-Bayt. One day he decides to make a 180 degrees turn and he embraced the path of the Ahl al-Bayt and he became a follower of Ali Muhammad. When he became a follower of Imam al-Kadhim, he stopped seeing those dreams. He came to Imam alayhi salam and said to him, Ya ibn Rasulillah, I'm not seeing those dreams anymore that I used to see. Imam al kadhim alayhi salam said to him, you were being told by Allah to follow the right path. Constantly Allah was giving you these messages, these signs. Now that you've followed the right path, you don't need it anymore. Now that you've embraced the path of haqq, you don't need to be given those particular yes, inspirations in your dream. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, the dream could be this. Bisharatun min Allah lil mu'min. Glad tidings. Number one. Number two. He says, وَتَحْذِيرٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ It could be a message to alert you of the dangers of Satan. It could be in your dream. That sometimes you see something in the night when you're asleep or any other time by the way, which could be an indication that you need to protect yourself from the whisperings of shaitan. 
or that you are about to fall in the pitfalls of what? The traps of shaitan. Sometimes this could indeed happen. Imam Ali Salam then goes on to say, the third category of dreams that you and I may see is what? وَأَفْغَاثُ ahlam. The dream could be nonsense. It could be nothing. Yes? Something that you should be ignoring. Question. How do I know? Which one of these is it? Because I tell you, there are people who will make dreams impact their mental health. There are those who go through depression sometimes, anxiety sometimes. When they see a dream, they begin to build so much on it in their lives. Number one, please remember this. There is no hujjah when it comes to the dreams of normal people like you and I. Meaning what? Meaning sometimes you receive these messages from people. I saw in the dream that I must pass this message to 40 people. If I don't, I'll die in 40 days. You've received these messages? One thing only is deserving of these messages. Delete button. That's it. Yes? Nothing else. Because some people freak out. They say, I have to forward it to 40 people, otherwise some harm will fall on me. Ulama, fuqaha, maraja have come forward and said, this you ignore. There is no obligation for you to forward these messages of people seeing dreams that you must do something, otherwise punishment will fall upon you. Yes. There is no hujjah. Hujjah means proof of any dream that you and I see. What does that mean? That means if I see in my dream that I must do something, this is not obligatory on anyone. I must not go and say, I saw in my dream that the whole community should do X, Y, and Z. No, there's no such thing. Similarly, what is it that I must do? This is the recommendation of our ulama. If you see a dream and it's inspirational, it's something that is helpful, something that boosts your morale, boosts your spirituality, boosts your connection to Allah, to Ali Muhammad, then you must what? You should or it's recommended to help and apply it in your life as much as possible. You personally. Yes. For example, I'll give you an incident that happened to me a few years ago. Yes. Somebody came to me and said, Brother, I saw you in my dream. I said, Khair, inshallah. Hopefully everything is good. He said, it's really distressing me. I said, Bismillah, tell me. He said, I entered the mosque in London, the Hujjat Mosque, Stanmore in London, and I saw you sitting with a man that I believe to be the 12th Holy Imam, Ajrallahu Ta'ala Faraja. Yes, the awaited Savior. And you were very engaged to talking to him. So when I entered, I said salam, and the only person who responded to my salam was the Imam. You did not. Because you were very busy talking to the Imam. Then I left the hall. Then I came back after a while. And I saw the Imam by himself. You were not with him anymore. What does this mean? I said, I'm not a dream interpreter. But I'll take the good in it. The good in it, in my lesson for me, maybe I need to pay attention to the salam of the people. Maybe people are saying salam to me and I'm not paying attention to it. So this could be an area to improve in my life. Yes. Sometimes we see dreams, take the good in it. Something that gets you closer to Allah, closer to Islam, not something that takes you away. Please, very important. Yes. If you see in a dream anything that weakens your iman or yaqeen or conviction or following of the Ahl al-Bayt, yes, throw this dream where in the garbage bin. If you see a dream that says to you, don't recite Ziyar Ashura, throw it in the bin. See a dream that says, don't come to the mosque, throw it away. Yes? But if you see a dream that says, for example, why don't you donate to an orphanage? Or if you see a dream that, for example, someone tells you, please go and make up with someone that you have broken a relationship with. Yes? This could be an inspiration to mend your relations. Yes? With that particular individual. Question. Are there times or indications in our lives when we sleep 
that the dream that we see could be sadiq, ru'ya sadiqa. There are narrations from the Ahlul Bayt that say, if you sleep in the state of wudu, and if you see the dream in the last third of the night, last third of the night means what? Means before Fajr, just before Fajr, this last third of the night. And if you went to sleep with the dhikr of Allah, with the recitation of Quran and Tasbih, this is likely to what? To help and possibly be a truthful dream. But it's not a total guarantee. Yes. We have to look at it overall. And we must judge it by this particular what criteria. And that is whether an individual is inspired or motivated to do good in society. That's why it's of the utmost importance that dream interpreters are not always trusted. Please pay, pay attention to this. Sometimes some mu'mineen and mu'minat pay money to some people in order to interpret their dreams. And there are people who have made professions from this. There are those who what, are now calling themselves experts of dream interpretation. They take money and they say, this is what your dream means. Be careful. Because the wrong interpretation can take people out of the fold of Islam. The wrong interpretation can make people doubt Allah and the religion. So be very careful who you listen to and who you ask for interpretation of your dreams. This is narrated by Ibn Abi al-Hadid al-Mu'tazili in his Sharh of Nahjul Balagha. He says that Aisha, the wife of the Holy Prophet, yes, was approached by a lady by the name of Asma bint Umais. Asma bint Umais, ta'ala alayha, a brilliant woman in Islamic history. You must know her. Asma bint Umais was initially the wife of Ja'far al-Tayyar, the brother of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ja'far is martyred in Mu'tah. She marries who? She marries the first Khalifa, Abu Bakr. Later, yes, Abu Bakr dies. But before he dies, she sides with Sayyidatul Nisa, Fatima, peace and blessings be upon her, in the matter of Fadak against her husband. Then her husband dies. Who marries her? Amir al Mu'mineen. Salamullahi alayhi. Marries Asma bin Tu'amais. So she's a great lady, perhaps the last person who saw Sayyida Fatima alive, according to narrations. Yes? Asma bin Tu'amais comes to Aisha and says to her, I just saw a dream. I'm horrified. You know, some of us have been in these situations. We see family members wake up in the morning pale. What's grown? They're like, I can't believe it. I just saw a nightmare. Right? And there's this thing which I saw evidence in narrations, by the way. That if you see a bad dream, don't tell it to anyone. These are found in riwayat and emphasized by ulama. I used to think when I was a child, my mother used to tell me, don't tell the dream to anyone. And if you're desperate to say it, go to the restroom and talk it to something. Yes. If you're desperate to get the dream out to someone, don't say it to anyone. Go somewhere in a room and what? Just speak to the wall. But don't tell anyone of your bad dream. Apparently, it's not good. Good dreams though, tell it to people you trust that will what will motivate you and not sometimes make you depressed other way around and make you doubt. Yes, I remember I had a friend at university many years ago. Every time I see him, he's down. I say to him, brother, why are you always like this? It's hasana, it's mustahab to smile. He says, we're all going to hell. What's the point? Ajib. Have people who are positive in your life. Yes, friends who are motivational, friends who get you higher levels rather than those who are pessimistic, who are always telling you that you're doing wrong or, for example, put you down. Sometimes, yes, the truth needs to be said in order for individuals to learn, but not in the spirit of constantly what? Constantly condemning individuals. So Aisha looks at her and says, what did you see? She says, I saw my dream in my dream, my husband, Abu Bakr. He went because he had gone for a battle. He, I saw him, مخضبun, he was dyed his beard and his hair with henna. You know henna? And he was wearing white clothes. He was wearing white clothes. So when he was wearing white clothes, I was worried. And he had henna everywhere. So what is the interpretation of this dream? Aisha said, it's over. She said, what do you mean? She said, Abu Bakr has been killed. 
This dyeing of his beard means that his beard will be drenched in blood. And his thing that he's wearing white means his kafan. He died 100%. So Asma becomes distressed. She becomes what? In a state of anguish. Later they go to what? They go to the Holy Prophet of Islam. When they go to the Holy Prophet of Islam, they what? They say to the Holy Prophet of Islam, they say to him, Ya Rasulullah, this is the dream of Asma. What do you think? What is the interpretation? The Prophet says, this is not true what Aisha said. That's not true. Let me tell you what is it. Yes. The interpretation is this. This is glad tidings for this individual. Because when he comes back from the battle, he will meet his wife Asma. Then Allah will grant him a son who will be righteous. Yes. That son was Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, who was raised by Amir al-Mu'mineen. Yes, and Amir al-Mu'mineen loved him. And he became martyred by Muawiyah. Yes, by Amr ibn al-As, who killed Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, radhiyallahu ta'ala alayhi, in Egypt. Yes, and cut up his body and placed it inside a donkey and burnt the donkey. Yes, so the idea is that wrong interpretation might create what? Might create confusion in the minds of people so individuals have to be what wary the final area before we discuss Sayyid al-Shuhada dreams is people say I saw the Ahlul Bayt in my dream what is the stance there right some people say I saw Amir al-Mu'mineen some people see the Holy Twelfth Imam some people see Imam al Hussein alayhi salam yes in the dream is this dream true or not they say there is a Sahih Hadith from the Holy Prophet, Rasul Al-A'zam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Man ra'ani fi manamihi faqad ra'ani. Anyone who sees me in his dream has definitely seen me. No doubt. Li'anna shaytan la yatamathalu fi surati. Shaytan doesn't come in my form. وَلَا صُورَ أَحَدْ مِنْ أَوْصِيَائِي And none of my vicegerents, shaitan, can come in their image. Some people have said, this means if I see the Prophet in my dream, it's 100% true. If I see the Ahl al-Bayt in my dream, it's 100% true. No. Why? This narration is sahih, but it's relevant for only those who know how the Prophet looks like. Because I tell you, you might see someone you think is the Prophet, or you think is Imam Ali, or you think is Imam Al Hussein, but in reality, that may not be the case. How do I know the individual that I see in my dream is one of the Ahl al Bayt? How would I know? However, the same rule applies. If you see someone whom you think is one of the Ahl al Bayt, and it's inspirational for you, take it. Apply it in your life, learn from it. Why? Because we have wonderful examples of this happening in the lives of people, normal individuals, ulama and others. Shaykh al-Mufid, Allah Ta'ala Maqama, he himself says, one day I saw a dream. In my dream, I saw what I believe to be Sayyidatun Nisa, the Lady of Light, Fatima al-Zahra al-Batul, salawatullahi wa salamu alayha. And she had bought her two sons, Hassan and Hussein. And she said to me, Ya Shaykh, Alim Ha'ula, teach these two. He said, I was baffled in my dream. I teach Hassan and Hussein? How is this possible? He said, I woke up and I just was very much confused. So later on that day, a lady by the name of Fatima, yes, Ibn Mansur, comes holding two young children and said to me, Ya Shaykh, Teach these two children. They were whom? A Sayyid al Murtava and a Sharif al Ravi. Sharif al Ravi was the compiler of Nahjul Baragha. Sayyid al Murtava was one of our great ulama, theologians, and muhaddith. Yes. Shaykh al Mufid said, I then realized that the dream that I saw was an indication of the greatness of these two individuals, that I must take them on. I must teach them. Yes. Similarly, we have ulama such as, for example, Alam al-Wahid al-Bahbahani. 
He's a great scholar who died about 200 years ago. He was a marja, great scholar in Karbala al muqaddasa One day he decided to leave. He said, I'm going to leave Karbala. I need to go somewhere else. In his dream, he sees what he believed to be Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. And he says to him, Imam says to him, Ana ghayru raavin bi khurujika min madinati. I'm not pleased for you to leave my city. Stay. He decides to stay. And his decision to stay was great. Similarly, you find people that have truly, truly been inspired through seeing aspects related to Ahl al-Bayt that have changed their lives. And I want you to remember this story when inshallah you go for ziyara of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, Because there is a man, yes, by the name of Jamal al-Din al-Musali. If you don't know him, remember his name. Jamal al-Din al-Musali was a Nasabi. Nasabi means one, hated Ahl al-Bayt. Because his parents had made a nither vow. If they're blessed with a child, that child will be dedicated to stop the zuwar of Hussein and kill them. That's their vow. So they were blessed with a child. When he was at a suitable age, they said to him, you stop on the way. Anyone comes going to Karbala from Mosul, from the north, you stop them. And if they insist, you kill them. He said, very well. He was brought up with the hatred of Ahl al-Bayt. He was brought up with the hatred of the Shia. Imagine this individual. Yes. He says, I came to the road in order to what? In order to stop the zuwar of Imam al-Hussein. But I fell asleep. It was at night. When I was asleep, I saw in my dream, I am on the day of Qiyamah being dragged to Jahannam. When I was being dragged to Jahannam, I was placed inside the furnace and the burning flames. But the flames were not touching my body. I was confused. Why am I not burning? Yes. I looked and I asked the malaika. I said, why? If Allah wants to punish me, why am I not burning? They said, because when you are asleep on this road to Karbala, some zuwar of Hussein walked next to you and some of the soil from their feet came on your body. The soil from the feet of the zuwar of Hussein is protecting your body from Jahannam. He woke up. He repented. He went to Karbala for ziyarah. Then he recited these famous lines of poetry. If you want salvation, then do ziyar of Hussein. So that you meet Allah pleased. Because the hell does not touch the body. That has the soil from the feet of the zuwar of Hussein. That is why you find that he was inspired by the dream, isn't it? He helped himself in his life. And therefore, the question now that is important to be asked, finally, the dreams of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. They are of the utmost importance, theologically, spiritually, historically. Question, how many dreams do we have that are recorded in historical records of Imam al-Hussein during his life? Twelve. 12 dreams of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam that are recorded in different books of history and different compilations. For example, we are told of one particular dream that he saw related to the ring of his beloved mother Fatima, peace and blessings be upon her. Because the hadith says what? The hadith says that Sayyida had aqiq fidda. Yes, she had a ring of aqiq. And she passed it on to her son Hassan alayhi salam. Imam al Hassan السلام, passed it on to Imam al Hussein السلام, when he was martyred. Imam al Hussein السلام, said that I wish to inscribe something on it. المسيح, I saw in my dream Jesus, Isa. This is who Imam al Hussein السلام, in a narration. So I asked him, Ya Ruhallah, tell me what shall I inscribe on this ring of my mother Fatima? Isa. Alayhi salam says to Imam al-Hussein in the dream. He says, inscribe on it, La ilaha illallah, al-maliku al-haqq al-mubin. La ilaha illallah, al-maliku al-haqq al-mubin. 
فإنه أول التوراة وآخر الإنجيل because this is the beginning of the Torah and the last thing in the Injil. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam acts on this particular dream and inscribes it on his ring. When he was in Medina, he came out and he said to people, Muawiyah has died. They said, how did you know? No one knows in Medina. He said, in my dream, I saw the house of Muawiyah burn and his member toppled. After a day or two, the news came from Sham that Muawiyah has indeed died. Another of the greatest of his dreams is the ones that many of us have come to know. And that is, after he refused giving allegiance to the corrupt ruler Yazid, the second day he went to the grave of his grandfather, the Holy Prophet. Peace and blessings be upon him and his family. The riwayat tells us that he prayed and he supplicated and he performed ziyara of the grave of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Then he fell asleep slightly for a few minutes and he saw the Prophet of Islam in his dream. This is when the second night after he refused to give bay'ah. He saw the Prophet and the Prophet said to him in his dream, Ka'anni araka murammalan bidamik. I can see you and your body filled with your blood and the sand mixed with the blood. Due to what this Ummah will do. Ya Bunay, innaka qadimun ala abika wa ummika wa akhik. Oh my son, you are coming towards us, towards me, towards your father, towards your mother. And towards your brother and they're really eager to meet you oh Hussein you have a status you will never attain the status except through martyrdom third day so this is a day after he saw this dream Imam al Hussein alayhi salam sees another dream many of us think that he saw one dream Whereas in reality, if you look at historical records, Imam salam saw two dreams in Masjid al-Nabawi and in both occasions he sees his beloved grandfather. The idea that emerges is that in that second dream, he, what? He starts off by reciting a dua. He says, Allahumma, before he slept, he says, Allahumma inna hadha qabru nabiyika Muhammad wa ana ibn binti nabiyik. Oh Allah, this is the grave of your Prophet. And I am the grandson of your Prophet. Wa qad hadarani min al-amri ma qad alimt. And then you could see my status. Allahumma inni uhibbu al-ma'roof wa ankur al-munkar. I love righteousness. I hate evil. Wa ana as'aluka ya dha al-jalali wal-ikram. Imam al-Husayn is speaking to Allah. He's an expert in dua. Yes, he's a physician of the soul. He knows exactly what to say to his beloved. He says, I ask you, you're the majesty, you're the magnanimity. By the sake of whomsoever in this grave. And he points to the grave of Rasulullah. Ya Allah, I want you to choose for the sake of the grandfather of mine, what is best for me and what is pleasing to you. That's it. I am looking for what pleases you. Then he sleeps for a short while. In his sleep, the second time, he sees the Prophet of Islam. And the Prophet reassures him once again that you will be martyred and that you will come to us and that you will suffer. This time, Imam al Hussein responds to the grandfather. He says to him, I am not interested in this world anymore. لا حاجة لي في الدنيا. I don't want this world anymore. خذني إليك ضمني إليك. Take me towards you. I don't want to go back. But the Prophet looks at him and says, يا حسين إن لك عند الله منزلة لن تناله إلا بالشهادة. You have in the eyes of Allah a status that will never be gained except through martyrdom. Now. What did Imam al Hussein salam do after he saw the dream? When he woke up, he went and told everyone of the dream. 
both days. He said to people, spread this dream. Spread it. Why? Because the dreams of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam had important theological connotations. Let's look at them very briefly. Number one, the fact is that he would say to people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will and command is for me to leave and to fight in Karbala. Because today some people say, how can someone go with a short number of people and fight 30,000? How is this possible? Imam al Hussein alayhi salam wanted people to recognize this is divine commands. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. I am submitting to Allah. I am pleased with Allah. I am following the commands of the Almighty Jalla wa Ala. That's number one. Number two, when he says people about his dream, he's saying this is direct commands from Allah through the Prophet of Islam. Because he sees the Prophet, yes. On countless occasions, he sees the Prophet. And the Prophet says to him, Go, Hussein. Fight, Hussein. Be martyred, Hussein. Yes. So this is reassuring, not only for him, for everyone else. Number three, this is telling the family of what is about to happen. So the dreams of Imam al-Hussein are an indication for all of those around him as to the events that will unfold in the next few weeks. Because he saw those dreams in Rajab, yes, 60 after Hijrah. But the fourth one is very important, the fourth reason. Please pay attention to this. There are those who try to stop Imam al Hussein leaving Medina. There are those who try to stop Imam al Hussein alayhi salam going to Karbala or going to Kufa. Yes. From them, Muhammad ibn al ta'ala alayhi. From them, Umm Salama, Ibn Abbas, and others. Yes. The dreams of Imam al Hussein. People knew what he saw was truthful because he would say to them, I saw my grandfather and he said to me, go. Who could debate that? Who could argue with that? In many occasions, he would say this. In Mecca, Muhammad ibn Hanafiya came to him and said to him, Akhi, Ya Hussein, please don't go. Go somewhere else. Go to Yemen. Imam says to him, I saw the Prophet after I spoke to you. So that means what? That means Imam saw another dream in Mecca and this time he also saw the Prophet of Islam. Because this time he says to him, I saw the Prophet after I spoke to you. And once again he reaffirmed the importance of me standing against the injustice and evil and sacrificing my life. He says to Ibn Hanafiya. Another of his dreams that he saw, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, was on the way to Karbala in an area known as Tha'labiyya. In Tha'labiyya, he was riding and he fell asleep for a while, for a very short period. Yes. What happened in Tha'labiyya was that he saw a small dream. Next to him was Ali al Akbar. Salamullahi alayhi. Imam alayhi salam woke up, was distressed. Ali al Akbar right next to, him, next to him. He said to him, Father, is everything okay? Imam says to him, I just saw a dream. And in the dream, I was told that you are marching towards death. Death is coming towards you. Ali al Akbar looks at his father with love and compassion and says to him, Father, aren't we on the path of truth? Imam says, of course. Ali says, إِذَنْ لَا nubali." If death comes to us or we go towards it, we don't care. We're on the right path. Yes. This is in no shape or form Imam alayhi salam doubting. This is to demonstrate the excellence of Ali and Al-Akbar. Sometimes these things happen in the Quran. Allah says to Isa, did you say to people to worship you instead of me? Of course Allah knows. But why is he saying to Isa, did you tell them? This is to illustrate it so that people know that Isa says, no, I didn't. Here, Imam Ali Salam, this is recorded so that people see the excellence of Ali al-Akbar. The vision of Ali al-Akbar, the courage of Ali al-Akbar, and his commitment towards the path. Yes. On the eve of Ashura, Imam al Hussein Ali Salam sees another dream. Yes, this could be the first time some of you hear this. But the dreams of Imam Hussein are seldom discussed. I did not find a single lecture in English about this subject. Yes. When it comes to this, what do we find? Imam alayhi salam says to them, I saw the dream on the eve of Ashura. I fell asleep slightly. He said, I saw dogs attacking me. 
and were tearing my body. And I saw a dog which had leprosy on it. Yes, suffering with leprosy. This dog was ferociously what? Tearing my body apart. He said, I can see that tomorrow a man who has leprosy will behead me. A man who had suffers with this will be the individual who will kill me. Similarly, on the day of Ashura itself, in Bihar, we are told that Imam Ali Salam was approached by a group of jinn. They said to him, Ya Rasulullah, we want to help you fight. We want to support you. He said to them, I do not need your support. Why? He said to them, I just saw in this morning, I fell asleep just for a moment or two, and I saw my beloved grandfather, subhanallah. The dreams of Imam al Hussein, many are related to Rasulullah. Because the path of Hussein is Muhammadi. Husseinun minni wa ana min Hussein. Ahabba Allahu man ahabba Husseina. Husseinun sabtum min al asbab. The idea is this constant relationship with Rasulullah. And therefore, Imam al Hussein says to the jinn, I just saw the Prophet. And he said to me, You are coming towards us. Ajil wala tu akhir. Yes, because I saw the Prophet says to me that an angel from the heavens has descended with a container. He is ready to carry your blood to the heavens. Ya Aba Abdullah. Yes. These are some of the dreams recorded of Sayyid al Shuhada, all highlighting the vision, the clarity, the commitment. The determination Imam alayhi salam had. But I tell you, they were not the first dreams that were related to Imam al Hussein that the Ahl al Bayt saw. Because we are told the Prophet of Islam himself would see the martyrdom of Sayyid al Shuhada, isn't it? In a narration both in Sunni and Shia literature, he is said to have said that one day he went to sleep and he said to Umm Salama, I want to sleep and rest. Don't allow anyone to enter. When the Prophet went to his room to rest, the young Hussein enters. Umm Salama is unable to stop Aba Abdullah from going to his beloved grandfather. She rushes towards the room. She finds Rasulullah sitting with Hussein on his lap. He is stroking the head of the young Hussein. But he is shedding the tears. He is crying. And so Umm Salama said to him, Ya Rasulullah, I am so sorry. I couldn't stop Hussein entering. He says, This is not what I am crying for. When my beloved Hussein entered and he sat on my lap, Jibrail descended and said to him, Ya Rasulullah, do you love this particular child of yours? says, yes, I love him. He said, Ya Rasulallah, your Ummah will shed his blood. Your Ummah will slaughter him. Your Ummah will kill him. And here is the soil from the land of Karbala. This soil, give it to Ummah Salama. Yes. When it turns red, she will know that Hussein has been martyred. Yes. That day, Umm Salama, yes, she said, in my dream, what did she see? She saw Rasulullah. But in what state did she see Rasulullah? She saw Rasulullah in a state that she's never seen him before. She saw him with dust and mud on his body. She said to him, Ya Rasulullah, why are you in a state? He says, my beloved Hussein has just been martyred. Umm Salama wakes up from the sleep she looks at this container and the soil has turned into red the soil has turned into blood she recognized that it was the day of Ashura the day of the martyrdom of Sayyid al-Shuhada that's why the Ahl al-Bayt those around the Ahl al-Bayt they would see dreams related to Aba Abdullah al-Hussein Sukaina bint al-Hussein then Rawaya tells us she saw a dream she said to people on her way to Sham she said I need to tell you this 
this dream. They said, what is the dream that you saw? Oh, the daughter of Hussein. She said, I saw myself uh, next to a place which looked like paradise. Uh, and I saw a great palace. When I saw this great palace, I saw five noble individuals. I looked up and there was an angel next to them. I said, who are these five noble individuals? They said to me, this is Adam and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa. But the last one had tears on his eyes. I came next to him and he was my grandfather, Rasulullah. I looked at him and said, grandfather, I wish you were there to see in Karbala what they did to us, what they did to your Hussein, what they did to your Abbas and Akbar. I wish you were there to see the calamity of Karbala. Then the angel said to me, Sukaina, Sukaina, Iskuti falakad abkaiti Rasul Allah. Peace be quiet, you're causing the Prophet to cry. Then she says, I saw ladies who had gathered inside this palace. I went and asked, who are they? I was told that one of them is Hawa, another one is Sarah, another one is Maryam, another one is Asia. But then I saw a lady that had a blooded shirt next to her. I came and I asked her, Oh lady, who are you? She said, I'm your grandmother Fatima as Zahra. I said, my lady, what are you doing? She said, Hada Qamis Abakil Hussein. This is the shirt of your father, Abakil Hussein. Your father Aba. Abdullah, I will never let go of the shirt of your father until the day of Qiyamah, yes? So the Ahlul Bayt would see the dreams of what? They would see the dream relating to Aba Abdullah. I ask you, that daughter of Hussein, what did she see in the dungeons of Yazid? That daughter of Hussein, Ruqayya Sakina, huh? that daughter of Hussein that craved Aba Abdullah, that wanted her father, she would constantly say, where is my father? Where is Hussein? Where can I find him? Until when she was in that dungeon, she cried and cried. They said to her, why are you crying? Oh, daughter of Aba Abdullah. She said, I just saw my father in the dream. He said to me, Ruqayya, you are coming towards me. I don't understand. Why is my father saying you're coming towards me? I want to see him. Where is he? Why is he saying this? to me in my dream. She saw Imam al Hussein in the dream. Then they bought her the head of Abba Abdullah. The head was in a container, in a bowl. She raised the cloth. She said, I don't want any food. But then she looked at the head of Hussein. She looked at Abba Abdullah's head. She cuddled the head. She stroked the face. She then placed her small hands on the beard of Abu Abdullah. She cried, Abba, Abba, Ya Hussein, Man aytamani ala sughri sinni. Who is it that's made me a yateem? Abba Hussein, who is it that's done this to you? Why is it that there is blood on your face, Abba Abdullah? This is a daughter of Hussein who hugged the, the head, who cried and cried. Every Everyone around her cried. Everyone began to shed the tears for the musibah of Ruqayya, musibah of Sakina. Then the tears stopped. Um, Imam al-Sajjad says to his auntie Zainab, Amma Zainab, Ta'ali warfa'i jasad akhti Ruqayya. My sister Ruqayya has died. Huh? She has left this world. What a musibah, what a tragedy. That tragedy that Sayyida Zainab, when she came to Karbala, when she sat next to the grave of Hussein, she cried. She said, 
تهم أخي أبا عبد الله My brother Hussein You gave me an amana to look after I left your amana in Sham in Sham I left your daughter in Sham She is غريبة She is وحيدة مظلومة شهيدة ألا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين وإنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها يا الله تقبل منا يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله we ask you for the sake of these majalis to make us of those who die in the state of the love of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad ya Allah raise us with Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad ya Allah grant us the ziyara of the shrines of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad ya Allah hasten the qaim of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad ya Allah make us of those who stand to support the awaited savior Ya Rabbal Alameen Wa ila arwah al-mu'mineen and mu'minat And for the souls of all those who have died in the state of the love of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Recite Surah Al-Mubarakatul Fatiha But before it's Salawat